We're here at CES 2025 to look at this Dell Pro 14 Premium. Now, it looks pretty standard from here, although if you look at it from this angle, you can see that it's slimmer than any other one that has ever been made. And that is because this particular example does not have a single fan in it, but it's not fanless, well, it is, but it also has ice, as in an ion cooling engine. Let's have a look at it. This is the Ventiva Ice 9, and if you look really, really close, there is a super tiny wire right here, and across it, they put 5,000 volts. Now, before we get into the science of that, you might be a little bit concerned about having 5,000 volts just in your laptop, but don't be concerned. The current limits are super, super small, so if you touch it, you'll get a tiny bit of an electric shock, but it will not be harming you. What that 5,000 volts does is ionizes the air, giving it a positive charge, and then this area in the back is grounded, which is effectively a negative charge. This means, you know, positive attract negative, air goes out the back of your laptop, and it becomes nice and cool. This guy right here is capable of about 0.8 CFM, which is similar to what you would find in a typical thin and light laptop fan. Now, I did ask them if it's possible to just throw more voltage at the problem and get more airflow out of it, but it turns out that the limit of this is actually the breakdown of the air. So at a certain point, this stops becoming ionizing air and you get lightning in your laptop, which is obviously not very ideal. So. <laughs> Physics kind of has them a little bit constrained, but fortunately, space doesn't necessarily. They have a 40 watt solution right here. Because of the size of it, it actually works really well with typical heatsink designs. Like you think of it, a fin stack is always thin, long, that sort of a shape. A fan is a square. So if you can instead have a little ion driver chummy, that is there instead, it's much more convenient for the design of your thermal solution. One problem though, is that the static pressure of these is uh, not, not good at all. It's very, very bad. <laughs> the poor airflow though, is not really Ventiva's problem. In this case, it is Dell's. So they have been actually working with Dell and Intel to help design this which is incredible. I cannot believe that OEMs are already on board with this. But basically they've redesigned how the vents are put in the bottom of the laptop to optimize for very low static pressure and high airflow, which allows us to have very similar performance to a laptop that has traditional fans in it. And it also even means that it can be thinner because you don't need the air gap that a traditional blower fan does need over top of it. Very cool. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, very simple, sound. A typical laptop like this might be somewhere around 28 decibels around there-ish, whereas with the Ventiva Ice, it's able to get down to 14. I can almost guarantee you that whatever room you are in right now is way louder than 14 decibels. For some context of how absurdly quiet 15 decibels is, we have put a bunch of work into creating an acoustic chamber at our office and that is able to get about like an 18 decibel noise floor, meaning that even with as much isolation as we can put into that little room, we still would not be able to hear this thing. It is so quiet. Only the air moving through the fins creates a noise. Two problems though, if they want to make this an actual product. First of all, powering the thing. It's 5,000 volts, so that can be an issue. And the second is, it might be a bit toxic. We'll get to that in a bit. First of all, the power. So this right here is a pretty typical step-up converter. Basically you go from five volts to 5,000 using just a whole bunch of little electronics in there. This one as it stands is about 60% efficient and that nets you compared to a normal fan, something like minus 20% efficiency. Now Dell says currently that's about a wash for power because since it is smaller than a traditional fan, they can add in more battery. But at the same time, theoretically, this could be more what, like 80 to 90% efficient. And they do think that they can get up to around there, which would bring it just about even with the efficiency of a typical computer fan. The second problem, toxicity. And speaking of which, dbrand is very toxic on Twitter. 
That's actually the segue to our sponsor spot. Our CES coverage is sponsored by dbrand's new Ghost Case 2.0. Have you ever owned a clear case that looked like this? Well, with the Ghost Case 2.0, that's literally impossible. dbrand's words, not mine. In fact, they're so confident about their zero yellowing guarantee that they'll literally give you a free replacement for life if it ever turns yellow. Now, you may have heard that clear cases can scratch pretty easily. In fact, dbrand had that exact problem with their original 1.0 version of the Ghost. Not anymore, though. They have spent over a year developing an all-new scratch-resistant coating and replacing every single Ghost 1.0 customer for free. That's how we got this one right here. So if you want to get the holy grail of clear cases from a company that cares about their customers, head over to dbrand.com slash ghost. And for a limited time, get $10 off, no coupon required. Thank you to dbrand for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to the toxicity thing. Now, when we are ionizing air, one of the things that is in air, quite an important part of it, is oxygen. And oxygen is two oxygen molecules that are together. You ionize it, boom. They go apart, now you have oxygen and another oxygen, just O1. The problem is, is that sometimes it likes to create O3, which is ozone and which is not particularly good for you. Now in higher quantities, ozone can be toxic. You could never create a toxic amount of it out of one of these guys, but at the same time, it smells. You only need a very tiny bit of it for it to be smelly because our noses are excellent at their job. To combat the ozone, they have actually coated the fins in the heatsink with manganese dioxide. That acts kind of like a catalytic verter in your car, which takes the ozone and allows it to easily go back into the O2 that it wants to be. Even if you just have ozone normally in your house, it will break down in 25 minutes or so. That is the half-life, so you don't really have to worry about it, but you don't want your laptop to be smelly. One other thing that I was a little bit curious about though is dust. It seems like that if you have just this tiny little wire in there, it could be very prone to getting clogged up. And of course, it is not impervious to dust, but interestingly, it can also detect dust. Now they won't tell me exactly how it works, trade secret crap, but apparently the electrical characteristics of this wire will change as dust gets attached to it, and they can actually create a report of how much dust your laptop has intake. And also, Dell apparently will just not make a laptop if it gets dusty and stops working. <laughs> I asked them about how they do it, and I guess they have just a chamber that is filled with cat hair and dust, and they just shake a laptop around in it for quite a while, and if it stops working, they don't sell you that laptop. Makes a lot of sense. Another thing you might be concerned about is upgradability, but fortunately that's very simple. There's a screw right here and a screw right there. And then you pull on this and it doesn't come off because it's glued down in this prototype. But in theory, you could just take this top cover off, swap out this component right here, and then boom, you have a working not fan fan once again. And another thing is just the cost. Now, of course, they are absolutely nowhere near the economies of scale that you have with fans. Fans have been around for a very long time and unsurprisingly, people have gotten very good at making them for cheap. But that said, these right here are very uncomplicated. It is a wire and a little bit of stamped metal. So this portion right here should be quite cheap. Although that said, you do still need a PCB and a bunch of electronics to get it up to 5,000 volts. So they don't expect it to ever get below the cost of a fan, but it should be able to get pretty darn close. And again, I just wanna talk about how absolutely stoked I am about this. Not just because I have a cool engineering sample thing here. I've seen loads of weird engineering samples. And again, the thing that makes me the most excited about this is the fact that Ventiva aren't the only ones that are excited about it. This is a real proof of concept that was made in collaboration with Dell and Intel has also been putting a lot of engineering behind getting it integrated and just generally testing it with their designs. That means that it isn't just them looking for it, but there's a good chance that you might actually have a Dell laptop in the future that has no fans, but still has forced induction. What would you call it? But still has airflow. Still has airflow. Sure, we'll call it that. Now, one final thing here, you guys get to decide who is correct. The Dell and Ventiva engineers have been arguing of what they should call this phenomenon. There's a couple names. So we can either go with Coulombic force, electrohydrodynamic flow, ion drag, or corona wind. Put down in the comments below which one you think should win. Just like 
you should have a great old day. Huge thanks for watching this video. Hit like, get subscribed, and I'll see you later.